Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and in today's video, I'm gonna help you with all of the math that you need to know for unit three, including a made up and then plagiarized formula from a 15th century Italian painter. If you're ready to think like a mountain and calculate like a scholar, let's get started. First, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the rest of my unit math review videos as well as all of my exam review content coming second semester. Now look, I know from teaching my own students as well as reading the YouTube comments and the Reddit posts that math is a lot of Ape Scholar's least favorite part of this class. So I put together a math review video that covers all of the types of calculations that you might have to do in the exam. It's just 20 minutes long and you can check it out suggested up in the corner. But this year I'm also making individual math review videos just like this one for each unit that involves a new type of calculation. That way you can dig a bit deeper into the specific types of questions that you're likely to see on each of your unit tests in class. The first type of calculation that you need to know for your unit three exam is percent change. Exam writers love to put percent based questions and especially percent change calculation questions on the FRQ section of the exam in May. So reviewing this type of calculation is critical if you want to do well on that FRQ section. The way I like to help my students remember percent change is new times 100 with the NOO standing for new minus old all over old times 100. And in this case, new means the new or final number in a scenario and old means the initial or starting number in the scenario. So let's take a look at an example from the FRQ section of the 2022 APES exam. So here we can see that we have this table that has Charlotte's population size at different points in time. In part C, we're asked to calculate the percent change in Charlotte's population from 2013 to 2019. So first we need to find the new number or the 2019 population size and plug that in. Then we need to find the old number or the 2013 population size and plug that in. Now all we have to do is punch this into our calculator, hit enter, and we'll get to our final answer of 13.22%. Just remember that when you enter this into your calculator, you'll either need to do each step individually or make sure to use parentheses so that you preserve the order of operations. And remember that to earn full credit on a math-based FRQ, you need to show your units in your work and in your final answer. Now, if new times 100 isn't a very helpful way for you to remember percent change, think of when you leave a tip at a restaurant. The percentage that you tip is always gonna be based off the original price of the meal. So whenever you're calculating percent change, that can help you remember that you need to divide by the original or the old number. And whatever you do, don't be like Mr. Pink and refuse to tip. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't care they'd count on your tips to live? You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. Wait staff at restaurants work hard and they deserve to be tipped well. In fact, chances are some of you watching this video right now work in the food service industry and I know you appreciate a good tip. But you know who else works hard? Ape scholars that want to ace that unit three test. If you want additional practice problems to make sure you're ready for any percent change questions, check out that link in the video description below. It'll take you to the ultimate review packet where I've added a whole new worksheet just for extra unit three practice math problems. Now the second type of problem that you need to be able to do in unit three is calculating the percent population growth rate using crude birth rate and crude death rate. Crude birth rate and death rate just refer to an estimate of the number of births and deaths per 1,000 people in a population. And the reason we call them crude is because they're rough estimates and they don't factor in sex ratios or age distribution in the population the way that total fertility rate does. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a fancy mnemonic device to help you remember this formula, but if you remember what crude and what percent mean, then it's pretty easy to remember this formula. The equation for calculating the percent growth rate for a population is just CBR minus CDR all over 10. Hopefully this first step of subtracting CDR from CBR makes sense since births add to a population and deaths take away from it. And you can also just remember that birth comes before death. But the reason we need to divide by 10 in order to get a percent growth rate is that crude birth and death rates are expressed as per 1000, while percent literally translates to per 100. So let's take a look at an example from an exam FRQ all the way back in 2003. Now I know none of you were even born at this time, but believe it or not, they were giving APES exams back then. And before we actually get into the calculation here, I just wanna warn everybody not to panic because APES exam FRQs have gotten significantly more straightforward since then. You won't be asked to create any graphs on this year's exam or sift through 500 different sets of numbers jumbled together in a huge paragraph like this. However, when we do dig into question B and sift through all of this background text, what we'll find is that we're being asked to calculate the annual growth rate of this made up country of industria in 1950. If we sift through all this background information and plug in our CBR of 22 and our CDR of 12, 
we can see that the industrial population growth rate is gonna be 1% in the year 1950. And just like the percent change calculation that we learned a few minutes ago, there's tons of extra practice questions for population growth rate in the ultimate review packet. Now, the final type of math problem that you need to be able to do in unit three is the easiest to perform, but has one of the weirdest origin stories of any equation ever, and that's the rule of 70. The rule of 70 is a super simple way to estimate the number of years it will take for a population to double in size. All you have to do is divide 70 by the population growth rate percent, and you get a rough estimate of the number of years it will take for a population to double if it continues growing at this rate. So if we wanted to calculate how many years it would take for Bolivia's population to double, we can just divide 70 by Bolivia's population growth rate of 1.2%, and we'll get an answer of around 58.33 years. Now, if you're curious about the math behind the rule of 70, it's based on the formula for exponential growth, where the final amount y sub t is equal to y sub zero, sometimes referred to as p for the principal or starting amount of something, times e to the power of r times t, where r is the growth rate expressed in decimal form, not percentage form, and t is the period of growth in years. Now, if you set y sub t equal to two times y sub zero and solve for t, you're effectively solving for the number of years that your starting amount y sub zero would take to double in size. Then you can divide both sides by y sub zero in order to get two equal to e to the power of r times t. Then you can take the natural log of both sides to get the exponents t and r by themselves, which will be equal to the natural log of two. And since we want t by itself, we can divide both sides by r to give us t equals the natural log of two over r. Now, if you're a serious mathematician, this is where things get a little bit dicey. We're gonna take some real liberties with the rules of math and just approximate that the natural log of two is equal to 0 0.7 instead of 0 0.69314718056. Although I do have to say that the rule of 69.314718056 doesn't quite have the same ring to it as the rule of 70. And since R in our original exponential growth formula was percent growth expressed as a decimal, we can just multiply both the numerator and denominator by 100 to end up with our final equation of T equals 70 over R, where R is the growth rate expressed as a percent. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably sitting here right now wondering who on earth figured this out. And unfortunately, it gets a little bit more complicated because the rule of 70 is actually based on the rule of 72, which has been attributed to Einstein, even though it was first published by Luca Pacioli, an Italian mathematician and Franciscan friar in his 1494 textbook, Summa de Arithmetica Geometria. But wait, because actually it was probably the Italian painter, Piero della Francesca. See, apparently Luca Pacioli basically copied Piero della Francesca's book, Trattato de Abaco, or the treatise on the abacus, word for word, in what has been called by scholars, quote, the first full-blown case of plagiarism in the history of mathematics. So on your unit three test, when you inevitably face that rule of 70 question, just remember that you're using a rounded up equation from an Italian painter plagiarized into a 15th century Italian geometry text that was then misattributed to Einstein some 400 years later. And now that you know way more than you probably ever thought you would, or frankly, probably wanted to know about the rule of 70, let's recap today's video with a quick review. The three types of math problems that you need to be able to do in unit three are calculating percent change, which you can remember with the mnemonic new times 100, calculating a percent growth rate for populations using the crude birth rate and crude death rate, and finally, finding the doubling time for a population using the percent growth rate and the rule of 70. Now, I hope this video is helpful as you're getting ready for your unit three in-class test or the exam in May. And if you want to check out a video that goes over everything you need to know in unit three, you can check out the unit three ultimate review packet video right here. And if you want to do a deep dive into any of the individual topics covered in unit three, you can check out that playlist right here. But whatever you do next, always remember to think like a mountain and write like a scholar and don't plagiarize your math textbooks from Italian painters.